Hello fellow Netrunners, today I have a very special one-off video for you. Today we'll be venturing into the pure theory side of Netrunner, that is uh, involving a lot of mathematics. So prepare your pen and paper because there's going to be a lot of calculations involved. Well not really, I've done all the calculations for you, all you have to do is to sit back and interpret the results for yourself. So. There's this thing called the hypergeometric distribution. You can read more about it on Wikipedia or Wolfram Alpha. Basically, um, it models the, the probability distribution of uh, the chance of finding a card in a deck given a certain number of draws. So we can use this to model a lot of things such as what are the chances of you winning after a certain number of R&D accesses or what are the chances of you seeing that uh, three three off card in your deck. So those, those are the two main topics I'm going to cover today and we'll look at the numbers and try to derive some results from the statistics. So our first section is winning on accesses as the runner. As you know, um, quite a few games or rather I would dare say a majority of games are won of R&D digs and for that you want to know how many R&D cards you want to access in order to win the game. Um, a common number that is often quoted online is 17. Um, and that turns out to be pretty true as you see right here. Uh, but we'll go through this uh, step by step. So first we look at food codes. Now uh, for those of you who are not familiar with food codes, it's the HB Glacier deck type that won Worlds this year. It is strong because it only contains 9 agendas in a 49 card deck and the runner needs 4 to win. 4 of the 9 agendas. So, assuming that the runner hits R&D, purely only R&D uh, accesses, how many agendas, how many cards must the runner access uh, to expect a victory? Uh, looking at the yellow boxes here, this, these are the number of cards that the runner needs to access of R&D, roughly 19 to 20 cards. That is a staggering amount, that is 40%, two-fifths of the corpse deck that you need to see to win. Of course, in a real game, I must put a disclaimer here, in a real game this such is often not the case. A well-timed legwork has a very good chance of hitting an agenda in hand as does uh, successfully winning a Capri side game or an Ash Trace on the remote and stealing the agenda from there. If you manage to steal an agenda from a high agenda density location, the number of R&D accesses you need to win is drastically lowered. But if you are only planning to purely hit R&D, say you are a Nasir deck with 3 R&D eyes, you're going to need a lot of R&D accesses. So let's compare this to another top tier 1 deck in the current meta which is Astrobiotics. As previously mentioned, 17 is the average number, roughly 16 to 17. Um, to yes, to find four agendas out of eleven. For those of you unfamiliar, this is a standard astrobiotics agenda suite. Um, nowadays, you might want to swap one breaking news out for one fifteen minutes, and that brings to me to another point. Um, because I'm doing pure theory here, uh, this does not account for a lot of in-game factors, and one of the crucial factors is defensive agendas. I cannot model any PD and fifteen minutes in my uh, in my chart here. But these further increase the number of accesses or resources that the runner needs in order to win the game. NAPDs cost 4 credits to steal. If you don't have 4 credits when you make the successful run, you're shut out of those agendas that could win you the game otherwise. And 15 minutes can obviously be shuffled back to R&D, which means you need more agendas to win. And for those of you who are still not so on the power of Global Food Initiative, I think this comparison here really um, sells the point. Comparing food codes with food codes without food, <laughs> uh, codes that can you call, you can call it, but basically um, imagine a deck that has the exact same agenda suite as food codes, but with the global food swap for priority requisitions. Instead of four agendas, the runner only needs three to win. Okay, uh, this is not exactly accurate. I did not model the possibility of the runner stealing three two pointers in a row, but. Roughly speaking, I would say the runner needs to steal 14 to, I mean, access 14 to 16 cards in order to have a 50% chance of winning the game, as opposed to food codes where this goes all the way up to 20. That's a huge difference. That is roughly two maker size. 
or the equivalent in R&D eyes. So I think it's pretty uh, convincing that the two influence spent on food, global food and the loss of uh, the ability, the 5-3 agenda ability in priority, priority requisition or Hades, shard, Hades, Hades fragment, sorry, etc. More than makes up for the fact that um, you are able to drag out the game longer and win games that you shouldn't have won otherwise because the runner stole three points, uh, three agendas but hasn't won the game yet. So again, I have to reiterate, this is all pure theory crafting. This does not take into account a lot of in-game factors. <clears throat> um, yes, there are lots of things that can change the flow of the game, especially HQ accesses. And this is one thing that you can never model in a pure theory crafting situation. Because a well-timed legwork can have a very high hit rate up to 50, 60 percent, maybe even more. And that really re drastically reduces the number of accesses you need to win the game. I don't think most runners nowadays can afford to make 20 accesses against food codes. Since you can't do that, you need to find agendas elsewhere. You need to be able to challenge their remotes. You need to be able to make them feel unsafe about scoring agendas, which means that they'll clog up in HQ and you need to have some way to attack HQ. So I think if there's one takeaway point you can see from this is that if you're up against a food codes or a similar deck involving defensive agendas, R&D decks are not as effective as what you think they are. Oftentimes I get into a game situation where there are only one or two R uh, agendas in R&D left and my chances of winning off even a maker's eye are quite low considering that perhaps there are 14 cards in R&D. If there are only two agendas in there, I have a less than 50% shot of winning the game. And this is true most of the time. Hence, it is very important now, in the current state, to have some form of pressure other than pure R&D pressure. And note that these numbers are only the 50% marks. 50% is means that you win the game half the time only, even if you get that many excesses. If you really want to guarantee, or rather have a good shot of winning the game, you need to go up to maybe as much as half of your opponent's deck to see half of your opponent's deck in order to win. Uh, reliably. So yes, uh, the take home point here is R&D accesses are not that good. Probably not so bad in astrobiotics because the number of accesses you need is much fewer. But against food codes, you really need targeted runs and you need to do them well because HP's eyes is just so taxing. Now let's move on to our second section which is probably more interesting especially for you deck builders out there. <clears throat> what are the chances of me seeing a particular card I included three copies of in my deck? given a certain number of draws. So the first section here is how many, given that I draw X number of cards, what is the chance of seeing a particular 3 off in my deck? What's the chance of, um, yeah, so for example, this number here on the runner side, 30% is the figure for seeing a sure gamble in your opening hand because your opening hand contains 5 cards. So every time you mulligan, you have a 30% chance of drawing that sure gamble. Same thing can, you can generalize the same thing for <coughs> any three of card, be account siphon, <coughs> sorry, desperado, wild side, etc. <coughs> sorry, uh, excuse my voice. Alright, um, and the chance of you seeing 50%, chance of you seeing a th particular three of 50% of the time is, uh, sorry, the number of draws you need to see a particular three of 50% of the time is nine draws. 9 is a very special number. Yep. 9 is the number of cards that Andromeda starts with in her opening hand. So whenever Andromeda draws her 9 cards, what is the chance of her seeing the three, one of 3 copies of Desperado in her, in her opening hand? 50%. What's the chance of her having a gamble in her opening hand? 50%. Daily cards, 3 of? 50%. Account siphon? 50%. She has a 50% chance of starting with any 3 of card in her deck. Now you know why she's tier 1 for so long. 50% chance of seeing all those burst icon is crazy. It's absolutely insane. But of course, um, 50% is uh, unreliable. When we look at um, the top tier players, they aim to, they strive to have a win rate of at least 75%. 
because that's usually the amount of prestige that you need to advance to the cut, uh, the top cut in typically in tournaments. So a 75% win rate is what you're looking for. And if your deck relies on this particular three off, perhaps it's the SMC in prepaid K, perhaps it's the wild side in noise or the cash in noise, then the chance of you, the number of draws you need to ensure that you see that crucial card to your deck goes up to about 16 for the runner and 18 for the court. So if you have one particular card in your deck that you really, really rely on to win games, I think a good example is Mushin Notion in Jinteki PE. Without Mushin Notion, it's pretty hard to win games because you cannot threaten awful things like Ronin and Cerebral Writer. The chance of you seeing a Mushin Notion I mean, if you want to reliably see your motion notion, i.e. in 3 out of 4 of your games, you need to draw at least 18 cards out of 49 as uh, personal evolution. So this is something to keep in mind. Even though you include 3 copies of a certain card in your deck, you still need to draw about a third, roughly a third of your deck in order to reliably see it. And there'll still be that 1 in 4 games where you just don't see that card and you'll be cursing yourself. Ever felt Awful when you have all your breakers out as criminal but haven't seen that account siphon even though you've drawn for the past 3 turns straight? This is why. That 1 in 4 game will happen. But generally, and um, as long as you include 3 copies of the card, you can reliably see it about a third of your deck in. But of course, that being said, this is the chance for only a single card. The problem comes when you deck build with multiple cards that synergize with each other, both of which you require. So if you need a two card combo, a pretty decent example would be say a typical Regas Reina, uh, Regas Anarch deck or a typical Noise deck which runs Wildside and Chronotype. Um, these decks are very reliant on Wildside Chronotype for card draw. And most decks only run two copies of Chronotype. Even if you run three copies of adjusted chronotype, say you do that, the chance of you seeing both cards is 50% only when you draw 15 cards out of 45 in your deck. In other words, you can draw through a third of your deck and the chance of you seeing the wild side chrono combo is only 50%. One in two games. The other half of your games you have to make do without the other half of your combo, which means that you even after digging through a third of your deck, you still have to take three click turns if you are with wild side without chronotype. Or worse, if you have chronotype in your hand but no wild side, you still have to continue drawing, click, clicking to draw until you reach the 75% mark where you can reliably find that wild side every three in four games. Uh, 75% is an arbitrary mark that I propose, as I said, because um, competitive players, I would say 75% is a win rate that you're trying to target. And that requires you to draw nearly half your deck. So yes, even after drawing half your deck, if your deck relies on a 2 card combo, there's still a 1 in 4 chance that you won't find your combo. So it is very important, if you run a 2 card combo, to not be completely reliant on it. And at least that is the case for Anarch decks, and that is why they are still t considered tier 1 or tier 1.5. Because um, you can win a game without Wild Side Chronotype, especially against Astrobiotics. This deck plays way too fast for Wild Side Chronotype. You can't afford to spend 6 credits uh, down payment on that, because that's 6 credits you can spend on stealing an NAPD and getting through 2 pop ups. So, um, yes. Uh, regular Anarch decks can do without Wildside Chronotype. It's a bit harder on them, but it's still possible. What you really don't want are decks where you're completely all in on the two card combo. If you don't find your two card combo, you lose. Then I'll tell you that if you draw half your deck, you still still lose one in four of your games. And this gets worse when you your combo is not a two card combo, but a three card combo. And believe me, there are lots of three card combos out there. A lot of um, relatively inexperienced players are drawn into these kind of combos. Say, one of the very classic examples is uh, uh, what do you call that? Whirlpool into Cell Portal into some money making card like Shadow. It's so much jank that it is very unfeasible. The chance of you reliably pulling that off 
is very low. Even after drawing half your deck, say about 24 cards of a corp deck, your chance of pulling a 3 card combo off is only 1 in 3. I mean 2 in 3. There will still be that 1 in 3 games where you're like, where is my whirlpool? I've drawn through half my deck and I still haven't seen it. Or where is my cell portal? And of course, that example that I mentioned is doubly worse because um, cell portal is position dependent. So if you draw your cell portal last, you are not in a good spot at all. So this is why most good decks don't rely, don't go all in on a 3 card combo. Because if you bring it to a tournament and you want to win 75% of the time, you have to draw through half your deck and that's not feasible. Drawing through even a third to half your deck requires about, at, at the very bare minimum, 8 to 10 turns. That's 8 to 10 turns where the runner has free reign on your centrals, if you are completely relying on that combo to keep the runner out. Another famous combo, and a much more recent example, is uh, Keegan Lane with Data Raven and Blacklist. Assuming he's playing this in um, near Earth Hub instead of Sync, because Sync has a lower deck size, uh, and assuming he runs 3 Blacklist instead of 2, the chance of you drawing Blacklist, Data Raven, Keegan Lane after drawing through half your deck is 2 in 3. There will still be that one, of, 1 in 3 games where you don't find one of those pieces and you cannot pull off that insane combo. There will still be that one, and that's not counting the games where your opponent whacks your R&D super hard and trashes your blacklist and your Keegan lane. You'll be forced to use your interns and I hope you've drawn enough of them. So this is why 3 card combos are generally unsuccessful in the competitive scene. They are fine if you can make do without them or if you can somehow drag the game long enough for you to see enough cards to make that work. And one example of that is DLR Val. Even though DLR requires a lot of combo pieces, Joshua B, Wilder Snap Pavilions, multiples of them, Fall Guys, it seems too much jank, seems like too much jank, but the threat of Siphon, the threat of Blackmail, slows down the, runner, the corp so much that you can bring yourself to these levels, where you see more than half of your deck, have a good chance of having multiples of each up, and you can start DLR milling them to death. So if there's one take home point from this is that if you are using a combo in your deck, please do make sure that you can live without the combo, that you have alternatives, that you have other ways to win. Because if you are all in on even a two card combo, you need to draw a lot of cards in order to see them, even if you include three copies of them. And for those of you who are thinking of skipping on influence to include less than three copies of a certain vital card, like a Count Siphon, uh, your probabilities will go down. And if you are really relying on that Siphon, you might want to think twice about uh, cutting down on those cards because Netrunner is a card game after all and this is why firstly card draw is key and secondly why multiples are important. Without the 3 of restriction in uh, Netrunner cards, there will be a lot of decks that include 6 copies of Desperado or something like that <laughs> to that effect. Well, consumer grade hardware and cards are coming very soon so let's see how that changes things but in the meantime Thanks for watching, hope you found this informative and happy net running. Goodbye.